We're delving into the peculiar, the bizarre, and the utterly fascinating obsessions of a man who shaped the world. We're referring to none other than Alexander the Great. What drove the mind of history's most legendary conqueror? Was it merely the thirst for power, or was there something more? Are you ready to discover the hidden facets of Alexander the Great's character to understand what truly made him great, or perhaps what haunted him? Should you find yourself among the few who have yet to encounter the legend of Alexander the Great, a notion as astounding as it is rare, allow us to shortly illuminate his character and the extraordinary feats that cement his place in history. Born in the rugged landscapes of Pella in 356 BC, Alexander III of Macedon, universally known as Alexander the Great, embarked on a journey that would forever etch his name into the annals of history. By the tender age of 30, he had carved out one of the largest empires, the Macedonian Empire, the ancient world had ever seen, stretching from the sun-kissed shores of the Ionian Sea to the enigmatic depths of the Indus Valley. His military campaigns are the stuff of legend, showcasing not just the brilliance of his strategic mind, but also the unyielding force of his will. Alexander was a man of deep complexities and unusual predilections. But his life was not solely defined by the clashing of swords or the signing of treaties. Now let's hear what made him a man of odd eccentricities and weird obsessions. Here are seven of his crazy habits and beliefs. Obsession 1. His weird fascination for Achilles, the hero of Greek mythology. Among the myriad obsessions that captivated Alexander the Great, his adoration for Achilles, the legendary Greek hero of Homer's Iliad, stands out with striking clarity. For Alexander, Achilles represented the epitome of valor, the paragon of heroism, and the ultimate warrior. It's said that Alexander held the Iliad in such high regard that he treated it not just as a piece of literature, but as a sacred text, a manual of heroism, a guide to immortality through glory on the battlefield. He kept a copy of the Iliad beneath his pillow, ensuring that the tales of divine struggles and heroic feats were never far from his thoughts, even in sleep. He sought to emulate Achilles' bravery, his unwavering commitment to glory, and his quest for eternal renown. This emulation was not confined to the battlefield alone. Alexander's pilgrimage to the ancient city of Troy serves as a vivid illustration of his devotion. In an act mingling piety with emulation, Alexander is reputed to have run naked around the tomb of Achilles, mirroring the funeral games Achilles himself had conducted for his beloved friend Patroclus. This act was more than homage. It was a ritual, a sacred rite, symbolizing Alexander's aspiration to link his destiny with that of Achilles. But Alexander's obsession didn't stop at mere mimicry or symbolic gestures. He also held elaborate ceremonies in honor of Achilles, showcasing his deep-seated desire to connect with his hero across the chasm of time. These ceremonies were not only expressions of respect, they were declarations of Alexander's self-view, his belief in his own place alongside Achilles in the pantheon of legendary heroes. He saw in Achilles a reflection of his own desires for glory, for undying fame, and for a legacy that would outlive the ages. Furthermore, Alexander's identification with Achilles was cemented in the presence of his lifelong friend and companion, Hephaestion, whom Alexander viewed as his own Patroclus. This relationship mirrored the deep bond between Achilles and Patroclus, further intertwining Alexander's life with the epic narrative he so admired. The death of Hephaestion provoked a grief in Alexander that echoed the lamentations of Achilles for Patroclus, underscoring the profound impact Achilles' story had on Alexander's personal and emotional life. In every facet of his life, Alexander the Great sought to embody the ideals and heroics of Achilles, making the legendary figure not just a model to emulate, but an integral part of his identity. This obsession with Achilles reveals much about Alexander, his aspirations, his vulnerabilities, and his unyielding quest for a legacy that would rival the heroes of old. Obsession 2, Alexander's Beloved Divine Horse. Bucephalus was no ordinary horse. His name, meaning ox head, was said to be inspired by a distinctive brand marking that resembled the head of an ox. But it was not just his appearance that set Bucephalus apart. It was his unparalleled bond with Alexander, 
a connection that transcended the ordinary relationship between a warrior and his mount. The tale of their first meeting is the stuff of legend. As the story goes, a young Alexander, then only a boy of 12 or so, was presented with a horse that no one could tame. Bucephalus was fierce and wild, but Alexander, observing that the horse was frightened by its own shadow, turned Bucephalus towards the sun, calming him. In this moment, Alexander did what no other could, mounting the horse and riding him with ease. This feat impressed his father, King Philip II of Macedon, who exclaimed, O oh my son, look thee out a kingdom equal to and worthy of thyself, for Macedonia is too little for thee. From that day forward, Bucephalus and Alexander were inseparable. Alexander believed Bucephalus to be more than just a horse. He saw in him a divine creature, a companion destined to share in his greatest triumphs and darkest moments. Together, they charged into battle, with Bucephalus carrying Alexander through conflicts that would shape the course of history. Such was the depth of their bond that it was said only Alexander could ride Bucephalus, a testament to the unique connection they shared. But all legends, no matter how grand, find their twilight. Following a fierce battle in India, Bucephalus succumbed to the wounds of war, or, as some accounts suggest, old age. His loss devastated Alexander, who mourned the passing of not just a horse, but a friend, a companion of his soul. In honor of Bucephalus, Alexander founded the city of Bucephala, locating it on the banks of the River Jhelum in modern-day Pakistan. This act was a testament to the profound impact Bucephalus had on Alexander's life, a memorial not just of stone and mortar, but of heart and spirit. Obsession 3. About Immortality Among the myriad pursuits that defined Alexander the Great's extraordinary life, his quest for immortality stands out as perhaps the most enigmatic. This obsession was not born merely out of a desire to live forever, but from a complex tapestry of beliefs that Alexander wove around himself, beliefs that he was more than a mere mortal, perhaps even a deity in his own right. Alexander's journey in search of immortality was as much a physical expedition as it was a spiritual odyssey. He ventured far beyond the boundaries of his empire, into the arid deserts and rugged terrains where it was said the water of life flowed. The tales of his encounters are steeped in the lore of the places he visited. For instance, during his campaigns in India, Alexander was rumored to have met with ascetics and sages, philosophers who claimed knowledge of the universe's secrets, including the paths to eternal life. One such example was his meeting with the gymnosophists, naked philosophers who lived in simple austerity and purported to possess deep wisdom. Alexander, ever the seeker of knowledge and power, questioned them closely, probing for any clue that might lead him to the water of life. Yet for all his questions, the answers remained as elusive as the quest itself. Alexander's search also led him to consult the Oracle of Amun at the Siwa Oasis in Egypt, a place renowned for its prophecies. Here, in the midst of the desert, Alexander sought confirmation of his divine status and any insight into his pursuit of immortality. While the Oracle is said to have affirmed Alexander's divine parentage, the secrets of eternal life remain just beyond his grasp. In his relentless pursuit, Alexander's expeditions took him to exotic and remote locales, each with their own legends of immortality. Yet, despite his unwavering determination, the mythical water of life continued to elude him. The more he searched, the more it seemed that the elixir was not a tangible substance to be found in the world, but perhaps a metaphor for the legacy one leaves behind. A legacy that, in Alexander's case, would indeed achieve a form of immortality. In the end, Alexander the Great's quest for the water of life may not have yielded the immortality he sought in the manner he expected. However, through his monumental achievements, his name and legacy have endured far beyond the lives of mere mortals. In this sense, Alexander found a different kind of immortality, one forged through the annals of history and the tales of his extraordinary life and ambitions. Obsession 4. The Persia Dress Code in the wake of his astonishing conquest of Persia, Alexander the Great embarked on a cultural crusade as bold and transformative as his military campaigns. Among the most symbolic of these changes was his adoption of the Persian dress code, 
a move that went far beyond mere sartorial preference. Alexander, ever the astute leader, recognized the power of clothing as a tool for diplomacy and integration. Alexander's foray into Persian fashion was marked by his wearing of the traditional Persian robe, the candies, and the tiara, or headband, which were symbols of Persian royalty and nobility. This was not merely an adoption of foreign fashion, but a deliberate and calculated effort to blend the identities of conqueror and conquered. Alexander understood that to unify his expansive empire, he needed to embrace the customs and traditions of those he ruled over. This cultural amalgamation extended beyond Alexander himself. He encouraged, and in some cases required, his Macedonian soldiers and officers to adopt Persian clothing and customs. This directive was met with resistance and disdain by many of his men, who viewed the Persian attire as an affront to their Macedonian heritage and a dilution of their hard-won victory. The traditional Macedonian cloak, or clamus, and helmet were symbols of their identity and prowess in battle, making the switch to Persian robes a bitter pill for many to swallow. Alexander's Persian cosplay, as it might be termed today, was not without its strategic benefits. At his famous mass wedding at Susa, Alexander married off his generals to Persian noblewomen, further cementing this cultural integration. These marriages, along with the adoption of Persian dress and customs, were designed to foster a sense of unity and shared identity among the diverse peoples of his empire. Yet, Alexander's fascination with Persian culture went beyond political strategy. It reflected a genuine admiration and respect for the Persian way of life. He was known to partake in Persian banquets and ceremonies, adopting their practices of proskinesis, a form of bowing or prostration that was customary in Persian court etiquette, but controversial among Greeks and Macedonians. This adoption of Persian customs and attire showcased Alexander's broader vision of a cosmopolitan empire. Obsession 5, the party animal and his admiration for the Greek god of wine, Dionysus. Alexander profoundly identified with Dionysus, seeing parallels between the god's mythical exploits and his own real-life conquests. Dionysus was known for his journey to the east, where he introduced the vine and spread the practice of viticulture, mirroring Alexander's own expedition into the unknown territories of Asia. Alexander's emulation of Dionysus was not limited to the battlefield. It extended into the realm of celebration and festivity, he was renowned for hosting lavish banquets that would go on for days, events that were the epitome of ancient opulence and excess. These weren't mere parties, they were extravagant affairs that sought to replicate the divine revelries associated with Dionysus. Guests would indulge in copious amounts of wine, engage in spirited performances, and participate in rituals that honored the god of ecstasy. One of the most vivid examples of Alexander's Dionysian celebrations was the festivities held in the city of Persepolis, the ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire. Here, Alexander hosted a banquet that culminated in the burning of the Persian palace, an act that some sources suggest was done in a drunken tribute to Dionysus, embracing the god's association with fire and transformation. Alexander's connection to Dionysus was further solidified during his campaign in India, where he actively retraced the mythical steps of the god. Just as Dionysus was said to have ventured into India, conquering and spreading the joys of wine, Alexander too made his way through the Indian subcontinent, seeking to emulate the god's legendary journey. He even engaged in rituals and celebrations that mirrored those dedicated to Dionysus reinforcing his image as a living embodiment of the god among his followers and conquered peoples. Alexander the Great's obsession with Dionysus reveals a man who sought to transcend the boundaries of the human and the divine, embracing the pleasures, rituals, and symbols associated with the god of wine. His legendary parties and his emulation of Dionysian myths were not just about hedonism. They were a deliberate effort to align himself with the divine, to imbue his conquests with mythic significance and to ensure his legacy would be as enduring as the gods he admired. Obsession 6. The City Builder One of his most enduring legacies lies in his remarkable obsession with city building. Unlike conquerors who were satisfied with the destruction they wrought, Alexander was a creator, 
a visionary urban planner who saw the establishment of cities as a means to immortalize his achievements and integrate the vast cultural tapestry of his empire. The founding of over 20 cities named Alexandria across his empire is a testament to this obsession. Each Alexandria was not merely a monument to his ego. It was a carefully calculated move to secure his conquests and facilitate the blend of Greek and local cultures. These cities served as administrative centers, military bases, and commercial hubs that played a crucial role in the spread of Hellenistic culture and the administration of Alexander's sprawling empire. One of the most famous of these cities is Alexandria in Egypt, founded in 331 BCE. Situated by the Mediterranean Sea, this Alexandria was meticulously planned by the architect Dinocrates. Alexander envisioned it as a link between Greece and the rich Nile Valley, making it a melting pot of cultures and a center of learning and commerce. The city's famous lighthouse, the Pharaohs, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the great library of Alexandria, underscored its status as a beacon of knowledge and innovation. Another example is Alexandria Eshate, the furthest Alexandria, established in modern-day Tajikistan. This city marked the easternmost boundary of Alexander's empire, serving as a frontier fortification and a testament to his reach. By planting these urban centers deep in territories unfamiliar to the Greeks, Alexander not only secured his military conquests, but also laid the groundwork for a cultural exchange that would resonate for centuries. Alexander's cities were not just military outposts, but were designed as vibrant living communities. They were equipped with theaters, agoras, public squares, and gymnasia, embedding Greek culture and lifestyle into the fabric of local traditions. This blend of cultures, known as the Hellenistic period, saw a flourishing of arts, science, and philosophy, with the Alexandrias acting as the epicenters of this cultural renaissance. Obsession 7. The Fear of Being Forgotten Even amidst his unparalleled conquests and the establishment of an empire that stretched from Greece to the far reaches of India, Alexander the Great was driven by a deep-seated fear, a fear not of enemies, but of obscurity. Despite his godlike status among men, Alexander was all too human in his dread of being forgotten by the annals of history. Alexander's relentless pursuit of glory was in part an attempt to outshine the heroes of myth and legend, to secure a place for himself not just in the world of the living, but in the realm of eternal memory. He sought to achieve what Achilles, his hero from the Iliad, had achieved, a name that would be remembered and revered for generations to come. Consider his journey to the Oracle of Siwa in Egypt, where he was proclaimed the son of Zeus. This divine affirmation was not just a bolster to his ego, but a strategic move to ensure that his name would be cloaked in the mantle of divinity, making him unforgettable. By aligning himself with the gods, Alexander was not just asserting his power, he was securing his legacy, ensuring that his name would be uttered in the same breath as those of the deities. Alexander's efforts to meld cultures, exemplified by the founding of cities and the spread of Hellenistic culture, were also part of his strategy to immortalize his name. By creating a cultural legacy that transcended borders and generations, Alexander aimed to make himself indispensable to the narrative of human history. Each city named Alexandria was not just a seat of power but a monument to his ambition, a permanent marker of his presence in the world. Furthermore, his adoption of titles such as King of Kings and the insistence on being recognized as a deity in some parts of his empire were attempts to elevate his status to mythic proportions. These titles were designed to ensure that his name would not just be remembered but worshipped, placing him on a pedestal above mortal kings and rulers. In the end, Alexander the Great's fear of oblivion, of being consigned to the shadows of history, was the flame that fueled his extraordinary life. It drove him to the edges of the known world, to feats of valor and conquest that seemed beyond human capability. Alexander the Great, a military genius, a king, and a man of bizarre obsessions. From idolizing mythical heroes to dressing in foreign fashion and seeking eternal life, Alexander's peculiarities make him all the more fascinating. What do you think was his weirdest obsession? Let us know in the comments below. If the whispers of history's enigmatic figures have ignited your curiosity, then don't let the adventure end here. Smash that like button, 
spread the word by sharing this video, and hit subscribe to dive deeper with us into the untold stories that history books shy away from.